Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin, and this is Levin TV, part of our Best Of series. We're doing three programs on something that means a lot to me and you and so many of us here, dogs. And we spend a lot of time on dogs because they bring us joy, don't they? Now, in this particular episode, we're going to look at heroic dogs. This is where freedom rings. If you believe in America, if you believe in the Constitution, the Constitution empowers us. It's a new day. America's back. America's back and America's going to get strong again. We're going to defend America and we're going to defend our interests. Liberty's Voice, Levin TV. We began this show five years ago. You believe that? Five years ago. We used to do some things like have uh, stories about dogs and so forth. And we've decided in the middle of all this, the virus pandemic and the Biden pandemic, that we will do a little bit more of that. And so rather than save it for the end of the show, I figure let's begin the show. And take a look at this. This is really heartwarming. Go. In October of 2020, I adopted a, a beautiful German shepherd. After suffering from COVID in December and January, I had a stroke. And I didn't realize I had the stroke because I was sleeping. When I got up to use the bathroom in the night, I fell straight down onto the floor and could not get myself up. Sadie came running to my side and was very concerned. She was licking my face and trying to keep me awake. As I struggled to get up, she became more and more distressed. It occurred to me that perhaps I could use her weight as a counterweight to pull myself up. Once I grabbed onto her co uh, collar, Sadie immediately or instinctively started to pull backward. She was able to pull me to safety and I was able to get myself the help that I needed. I intend to spend the rest of my life giving her the best life I can. I encourage everyone to adopt one of these shelter pets. The love that you give them is returned to you tenfold. I want to tell you guys something. I can't tell you everything. It's just too personal. That is my Sadie, Barney. And I'll tell you, and I wasn't planning on doing this. Um, we had lost our dog, Pepsi, about uh, six, eight months earlier, and I was extremely down. I'm no doctor, I'm no expert, but I feel I was quite depressed. And I was alone. And... Uh, so I went to this adoption with the group that I am very uh, fond of, Lost Dog and Cat in Virginia, and they had these weekly adoptions. And I went with my friend Eric, who was a boyhood friend of mine, and he has two or three dogs at the time. And we were looking over all the dogs. I was just not looking to adopt any dog. I went there to contribute, to encourage other people to adopt. I'm not sure why I went there. Like I said, I was by myself. I was writing one of my books, and off the top of my head, I'm trying to remember. I think I was finishing a Meritopia, as a matter of fact, because it was uh, a little over nine years ago. And um, my buddy Eric was on the floor with this little white or off-white dog. And he clearly wasn't a purebred. He wasn't a puppy, but he was young. And he picked him up, and cuddled him and he was licking and seemed ever so slightly stressed that it was an odd environment for him. And I said to the head of the organizations there, a dear friend of mine, Pam, I said, how long have you had this dog? She said, really? We've had him like uh, four and a half weeks. I said, and nobody's clearly adopted him, didn't bring him back or anything? She said, no. So Eric called his wife and said, can we get the dog. He already had three, and she said, no, you know, three's pretty good. That's enough. And I said to Pam, I said, the problem is you haven't given him a good haircut. So I gave her some money. I said, let's get him a good haircut. But he kept weighing on me, this dog. Why was he there four and a half weeks? What was his history? What was his background? 
he seems so out of place there, like, what am I doing here? And so a couple days passed and I called Pam, maybe one day passed, and I said, you still have that dog? She said, yes. I said, well, I want that dog. She said, really? That dog's the luckiest dog in the world? I said, no, 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 no. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I want the dog. So we went to pick him up at a vet. He'd been neutered. They figured he was about two, two and a half years old. Uh, he had that had a beautiful new haircut. And we brought him home. And that night, I had made a little bed for him next to my bed. And I put him in the bed. And I'd say 60 seconds later, he jumped on the bed. I said, all right, buddy. This is where you sleep next to me every night. I didn't much like the name somebody had given him, Roscoe. And so I called my kids and they gave me a number of suggestions for names. And I looked at them and I said, you know what? You're Barney. My little Barney. And that's what he became, my little Barney. And then I found out the history. Somebody dropped him off at a pound. It was a kill pound in rural Virginia, um, Staunton, Virginia. And um, he was about to be uh, executed with six or seven other dogs. And my friends at Lost Dog and Cat had, uh, you know, taken a van to these various places. And still in some places like Georgia, they, they have these little gas chambers where they gas the dogs. It, it, I, this I don't understand. It's sickening to me. But they saved these six or seven dogs and brought them back, and he was one of them, thank God. And when he passed away, I did some more research. I had his original collar. I have them on my desk. I have the original paperwork. I have it on my desk. And apparently some woman dropped him off, either because she was ill or she was tired of him or couldn't afford it. I don't know why. But it was to my great benefit. He was potty trained. He was an absolute joy. And again, I was alone, and he would sit at my feet when I was writing my book. He would bark at the deers in the back, the deer rather. He would uh, bark at the postman. Wouldn't hurt a soul, wouldn't bite anybody. You guys remember him, right? He was the happiest, most joyous little creature. And so when I see this, and that dog is wagging his tail. I get it. Because every day when I would come into the house, running an errand or going to the studio or whatever I'm doing, my Barney would react that way. Like he hadn't seen me in a year. And so maybe I'm a little weird. But when Pepsi passed away and Griffin passed away, the two dogs before Barney and I keep a little yellow stick of notepad. And every week I put a notch. Every week I put a notch. And I've done the same with Barney. I stopped with them after six or seven years. And now I do it with Barney. And last week was week 42. So that's my Barney. We're gonna do more of that. We wanna start our program off with a dog. We love dogs here. In fact, I must confess, I love dogs more than some human beings. It's just the way it is. And uh, we try to bring you some funny dog stuff, some happy dog stuff, before we jump into some of the inane human stuff. So let's take a look. This is uh, Kratu, I believe that's how you pronounce it, steals the show at Crufts, which is an international dog show, which none of us watch. But let's take a look at this. Go. He's not coming out. <laughs> well, I'd love to tell you who this dog is, but I haven't got a clue, if I'm honest with you. But um, we'll do our best, as always, Graham. I think it's uh, another farewell performance. Another uh, cameo. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it is. Oh, <laughs> he's having a good time. Bit of a tunnel block up. Leave the best till last. Leave the prime entertainers to close the show. That's an old show business maxim, and that's what we're getting here today in the rescue dog. These Brits are not happy. It's a rescue dog. It's, a, it's what we call a mutt. Oh, yeah, that's there we right. go. That's right. 
Guess which end I'm going to come out of the tunnel. Ah, don't fancy that jump at all, nor that one. <laughs> He smells all the other dogs. It's almost that's a game. It's almost a, oh, a bit of Mickey oh, taking oh, from the dog. Me. Now, that's definitely against the rules. <laughs> I promise you. That I, I, wow. Because I'm a judge, you know, and okay. I, that is against the rules. <laughs> that has to be a few faults, that. He's happy. This be the first time I've actually seen a dog take a chunk out of an obstacle. <laughs> He's having a blast. Like the taste as well, I think. What a rascal. Absolute rascal. He wins in my book because it's the kind of dogs I've had over the years. And always miss them too. A dog story, and you know we love our dog stories. This from Good Morning America some time ago. A woman with type 1 diabetes has this beautiful alert dog who helps save her life. Go. A diabetic alert dog helps you manage your diabetes and your blood sugar and that they can smell when your blood sugar goes too high or too low. Oh, it's a very aggressive poop. The ideal diabetic alert dog will let you know before it gets too high or too low. Good oh boy. Good oh boy. They should come to you right away and be like, hey, something's going on. you got to take care of this right now. This is what Corey does if I faint from a low blood sugar. And he keeps barking until help arrives. Here I have a t-shirt I wore when I had a low blood sugar. I take the shirt and I hide it under my sweater. He alerts me by booping his nose into my leg. Good boy! He also brings me my juice bottle, which is in the same place so he always knows where it is. Good boy! Corey's a goofball. He is afraid of the floor. <laughs> I've put his yogurt in his box and he will not come to lick it. Come here. Look at how afraid he is. And he won't even walk from this into his box. Something happened with the floor and it was something around a corner. It was from one day to the next. He did not want to walk on our floors. So I talked with my trainer here, and she's like, well, why don't you try putting on like his winter shoes for the snow that they don't cut their feet and everything? And we put them on and it was like, ting, like magic. Like, oh, I'm walking like, yeah, this is great. I'm not scared anymore at all. So he wears shoes and socks. <laughs> I think it's like a good like 90% of my day is just thinking about it. There's no break from diabetes. 24-7, 365 days a year. I definitely developed more anxiety the older I get and definitely depression because you're just trying to live a normal life and diabetes doesn't let you live a normal life. You have good days and bad days. My boyfriend's a super deep sleeper. I'm a deep sleeper. All right, I want to ask my doctor about a service dog. Corey and I are going to show you what he does at night when my blood sugar is low. For right now, I'm going to take my low t-shirt and I'm going to hide it under my blanket so that he has the smell of the low. I lay down in my bed for a few minutes and pretend like I'm taking a nap. Then he boops me until I wake up. Good boy. He also goes and turns the light on so that I can see where my juice is and where my meter is. Light! Good boy. Amazing. And for me, it's really especially important that he wakes me up at night when things start to go low because I don't hear it and then I won't wake up 
He's always right. We're going to show you how Corey alerts for a high blood sugar. I put these towels on me when I had a high blood sugar. I'm just going to hold the jar close to his nose. His alert for highs is spinning around in a circle. Show me! Good boy! I mean, he is the best. <laughs> he just like brings joy, even if I'm having a super bad day. Like he is just lights up my face and he makes me laugh. And he's really helped a lot with like, with anxiety and depression too. He's just a great little dude and I love him so much. <laughs> beautiful, 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 beautiful dogs. Pure joy. Mr. Executive Producer here just got a puppy, nine weeks old. And your other dog is how old, David? 13 and a half. 13 and a half, and they're getting along great because he lost a uh, beautiful dog a little bit back. And uh, it's very tough, very, very tough. Anyway, wanted you to see pure joy. And I like dogs more than many human beings, I must confess, because they're not evil. And even the ones that bite and are aggressive, it's not because they're evil, it's because that's the breed or that's what's in their brain. But uh, i tell you. You want to see a hilarious dog that thinks he's Einstein? Well, that's what we're going to start off the program with. Don't worry, we'll get into the grist. But let's look at this first. Go. Ten. Nine. Lola kind of taught herself to play hide and seek. Let's see. She's so intelligent that she would just scoot herself under the chair so I don't see her. I've never seen a dog do that before. <laughs> Let's see what... I am Dutch Richard, and this is Lola's story for Geo Beats. I talk. Lola is like... I don't even know how to explain it. Stop giving me attitude. You need to take a bath. You need to take a bath. Lola's funny. Go pee-pee. Oh my lord, smart. She's also human. <laughs> my friend Ava texted one morning and told me that there were some puppies that needed a home. Lola caught my attention right away. It was her and a bunch of her siblings with a sign on the yard that said the puppies looking for a good home. They were all cramped up in one crate. Sit. Lola's really smart. How do you even look at me the whole time and know where the button is? Bet you can't do it again. Uh oh. <laughs> what do you want to do? <laughs> Ten, nine. I hope Lola's not under the chair. Wow, I don't see anything. Lola under here? Let me move the chair back a little bit. <laughs> I saw that advanced dogs talking to their owners using buttons. I ordered the four buttons. I'll play with her for a little bit, and then I'll kind of take the toy away, and then she will have to try to navigate. Every time she hit the play button, I would give her her toy back. Her least favorite button would probably be the bath button. Lola, Lola, wait. Ever since she was a baby, she doesn't like that. You need to take a bath. <laughs> I can't say the B word around Lola, but she needs to take a nap. Oh, Lola, how do you even know what I was talking about? Her favorite button is the treat button. No, I said what I said. <laughs> this button has taken over. <laughs> Lola has gone a week without the tree button. Lola and her siblings, they all went to a good home. what breed Lola is. Lola is a Siberian Husky, Belgian Malinois, Chihuahua, and La Siapsa. Our bond is really strong. I got Lola over quarantine and everybody was home all day. So Lola and I would just spend every hour together, 24 seven in the house. Lola, just let it go. It's gone, Lola. Lola has made my life so much happier. You'll learn your lesson. That is amazing. And that Lola is just a fabulous dog. Fabulous dog. And look at the bond. Look at the relationship. I've had that with my dogs, too. Uh, a couple of them were geniuses, too. But all just full of joy. The other morning, Dana Perino was there with her new dog, Percy, a puppy. 
she was there with the with the three wonderful hosts there and kill mead and mentioned that uh you know mark levin wrote a book about a dog too and he's into dogs too oh god knows i am i surely am we love our dogs don't we i do so let's take a look go <laughs> That is hilarious. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. Get in there, big boy, and help your dog. Um, excuse me, sir. Do you um, know how to get to the beach? Is it over there? That's funny. Have a good night. <laughs> What's he got there? Found it. A rock. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh, poor Chihuahua. Overweight, too, like most of them are. Ours always were. My mom and dad kept feeding it. There he goes. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Uh oh. We have a conundrum. What did you do, catch a fish? Oh, fun ball. Look at that. That's really smart. Another smart one. Look at this. He likes ice. Or she. You're making the mess, bro. No, no, no. Oh, my lanta. That's beautiful. Thank you. That's wonderful. Thanks to the folks here, the crew here, for finding it. Then that change your whole attitude? It does for me. I can watch that for 35 minutes. But unfortunately, we must press ahead.